So hi everyone, welcome to the last video lecture, possibly last video lecture for uh, our course. And uh, module four will be focusing more about the Philippine professional standards for teachers. This is a framework where we, we use this to assess, to evaluate uh, the teacher's competencies. So, pag kayo naging teacher na, especially sa public, pag pumasok kayo sa public, uh, sa nakikita ko, ito rin ang basihan para ma-promote yung mga teachers. So, mas maganda na ngayon pa lang aware na tayo kung ano to. And, um, kayo mismo i-assess nyo yung sarili nyo if pasok pa kayo dun sa uh, rubrics, pasado ba kayo? Are you considered as a proficient teachers? or a beginner, or a novice, kung tawagin nila. So, let's start with uh, our lesson. So, Philippine prof Professional Standards for Teachers. This is from uh, NCBTS. So, baka naririnig nyo na to sa previous nyo discussions uh, about education or the educational system here in our country. So, National Competency-Based Teacher Standards, it was institutionalized through CHED Memo Order Number 52 Series of 2007 and DepEd Order Number 32 Series of 2009. It emerged as part of the implementation of the Basic Education Sector Reform Agenda or the BESRA and was facilitated by drawing on the learning considerations of programs such as the PIM, STRIVE, and the TEEP. So, uh, align to sa plano ng government to implement the K-12. So, since uh, K-12... It's uh, a new educational system in our country. Uh, I think this is the this year is the sixth year implementation of uh, K to 12, and uh, the government are striving hard, not just to change the educational system. Sempre maraming aspects ang educational system, eh. and one of those is the teacher's competency. And from there, nabuo ang uh, ganitong framework to evaluate, to assess uh, the teachers kung itong mga competencies ba na to, eh, um, meron na mga teachers natin dito sa Philippines. So, if you want to know more about how K-12 started and so on, you may scan the QR code in my slide. Now, from the that framework, actually, this is from the PPST framework. So, ang aim ni PPST ay first to recognize the importance of mastery of content knowledge and its interconnectedness within and across curriculum areas, coupled with the sound and critical understanding of the application of theories and principles of teaching and learning. This is what we call the, the first uh, quality na that was aimed by NCBTS actually and also PPST is content knowledge. So, sa uh, framework na to, sa diagram na to, you can see that, um, well, it's quite complicated, no? But the aim is, or in short, teachers should have mastery of their subject matter, of their field of expertise. However, hindi lang, hindi lang ganun-ganun lang yon na master mo na ang uh, isang area or isang field. A teacher should know how to uh, teach it. Okay? Kaya nga may uh, pedagogi pedagogical Okay. Content knowledge is uh, our mastery, eh, our expertise in a certain area. But how can we teach these to our students? Kaya ba nating uh, going easy or uh, 
activities na kayang gawin ng mga bata and at the same time, they will learn a lot from it. They will get the, the basic and the complex competencies in that, in that subject. So, yun ang pedagogical content knowledge. So, it's not just about a teacher uh, knowing all of the, the topics in a certain subject, but how can he or she implement these subjects through activities, projects, different assessment tools to ensure that students are really learning or uh, they can get the necessary competence in that subject. Another, not just that, Okay, di lang din doon nagtatapos. So, maraming interconnectedness uh, itong quality na to ng teacher. Dapat, a teacher should also know how to, ayan, interconnect it. Okay, interconnectedness and across curriculum areas. Not just in his or her field. Dapat alam niya din kung paano i-interconnect to sa ibang areas. So, Sa TLE, hindi lang naman, uh, for example, pagluluto ang natututunan dyan. Science behind food. Uh, math, in terms of computation of uh, probably calories or measurements. Um, entrepreneurship. Okay, so business side, business mathematics. Um, ano pa ba? Writing, uh, business plan. So, even the writing skill, reading skills ay um, na, na e enhance natin o natuturo natin sa, sa ating subject. And, one more thing is uh, the new one. Ito bagong um, uh, idea or um, target or competency, I mean, of a teacher is the technological, pedagogical content knowledge. So, with this one, the aim of this is for teachers to know also how to use technology in teaching their subject matter. So, ngayon, hindi lang uh, paano mo ituro, pero with the use of technology or with the right use of technology, can we uh, teach this certain subject this field to our students properly, efficiently, and uh, effectively. So, that is technological, pedagogical content knowledge. Besides the TPAC, we should also know, first, alamin muna natin yung PCK. Kasi dapat yung CK, yung content knowledge, ayan, yung content knowledge dapat uh, innate na sa atin yan. However, ito, Yung pedagogical content knowledge and technological content knowledge, a uh, technological knowledge, and merge it all together. So that's uh, the one of the focus of PPST framework. Kaya ba gawin to ng teachers natin? Uh, by the way, I forgot to add in the previous uh, slide, even the uh, use of mother tongue language is uh, applicable in that quality. However, kasi pag, pag sa atin, since uh, junior high school to senior high school tayo, so much better if we will practice our students in using Filipino and also the English language. Next is provide learning environments that are safe, secure, fair, and supportive in order to promote learner responsibility and achievement. And also establish learning environments that are responsive to learner diversity. So with this one, it focuses more on creating and uh, creating the learning environment that is um, conducive for the students. So, when we say learning environment, hindi lang yan yung physical. Physical environment, the classroom, the ventilation, and so on, hindi lang yon. Pati yung behavior, yung uh, atmosphere inside the classroom, if baka naman feeling niya nabubuli siya or nila left out. So, uh, that's another uh, aspect of the learning environment. 
So, teachers should create an environment that is learning focused and they efficiently manage learner behavior in a physical and virtual space. So, since uh, we promote, again, the use of technology uh, that is not just bound in the four corners of our classroom, but even when we're outside of the school, we want students to know how to use technology for uh, their learning. So, even physical and virtual space. Kaya nga, meron na tayong um, anti-cyberbullying, right? Because, kahit sa social media, eh, affected yung mga uh, students. And when they are bullied, even in the social media, damay-damay na their relationship with their, their parents, with their family, and even in their performance in school will be affected. Kaya, as much as possible, we do we conduct uh, parent-teacher conferences. We talk to our students. We uh, have anecdotal records to to know or to track their behavior, not just their performance, not just their class performance, but their behavior as well. So the util teachers should also utilize a range of resources and provide intellectually challenging and stimulating activities to encourage constructive classroom interactions geared towards the attainment, attainment of high standards of learning. So for that one, uh, pati yung mga activities natin sa uh, school, di ba nga, as mentioned, resources, a range of resources that provides intellectually challenging and stimulating activities. So, dapat yung mga um, resources natin, instructional materials, should, well, not be um, discriminating, okay, and appropriate to their ability that will challenge them to go to their next level. So, hindi pwedeng sobrang dali, hindi naman pwedeng sobrang uh, hirap naman. Again, assess the students first if they can do this. Then, you may proceed with um, conceptualizing or developing an activity that is appropriate for them. But still, hindi pwede yung discriminating. Uh, like, Nowadays, may nakikita akong mga instructional materials na I think you've heard of that, yung about sa um, magsasaka. So, there was a picture of a farmer together with his family na butas-butas yung damit. So, uh, why is the um, interpretation or the illustration of a farmer like that? Pag magsasaka ba? Bakit parang mukhang, mukha naman atang pulube yung, yung magsasaka? Eh, without them, mahirapan tayo sa, sa pagkain natin everyday. So, something like that. And they respect, or teachers should respect learners' diverse characteristics and experiences as inputs to the planning and design of learning opportunities. They should encourage the celebration of diversity in the classroom and the need for teaching practices that are differentiated to encourage all learners to be successful citizens in a changing local and global environment. So again, it is not uh, applicable and it's uh, unethical to humiliate our students just because of their background or their differences in our school, in our class, I mean. So, hindi pwedeng uh, porket ganito ang background niya or yun nga, like the farmer. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na farmer lang ang, ang tatay mo or because of their uh, sexuality, ay bakit ka nagsusuot ng ganyan? Alam mo bang pambabae yan? We can, we can talk to them properly, okay? We can talk to them properly if they are really disobeying something. However, let's still respect our learner's background. Um, pwede din naman, not just because of their, their culture or their background or ethnicity, baka may problema na din yung bata. So, with that, again, let's uh, talk 
with respect to our students, with empathy also. So, in our class, we should accept all of our learners. Uh, ako, ang lagi ko nang iniisip ay um, my, my learners or my students are dealing with so much stress. Ayaw ko na ng pagdating nila sa school or pag nagkaklase kami, eh, bibigyan ko pa rin sila ng stress. I want my class to be a safe haven for my students where they can, you know, breathe, uh, be themselves, and uh, be confident about who they are, um, their abilities, and so on. So, I want my class to always be like that. Kahit na uh, mapa-junior high school, senior high school, or even the, the collegiate level. Kasi, um, I've, I've been there. I've been in a position where uh, pumapasok ako sa... I, I go to school because... Um, hindi ako motivated sa bahay. Hindi ako, um, I, I don't feel safe. I don't feel okay when I'm at home. And my safe ha haven is, is my school. So, I also want to create that, that kind of, uh, atmosphere in my class. And I do hope with you also. Next is interact with the national and local curriculum requirements. Since K-12 is um, the goal of K-12 is to be uh, globally aligned okay, with the curriculum requirements. Kasi, di ba nga, sa, sa ibang bansa, they have senior high school, but in our country, in the past, wala. Kaya hindi tayo globally or internationally uh, aligned with their curriculum requirements. Kaya dapat um, sa klase natin, we're not just focusing on the Philippine setup or information, but even information in other countries. So, kung TLE, um, let's say cookery, uh, Cuisines of other countries, uh, regulations about food safety. So, those uh, topics, we can include them. And, nagbibigay naman, si, si DepEd naman, uh, sa curriculum na binibigay nila, usually, uh, nakaset na yan na uh, aligned with, uh, with, with other countries' requirements. Okay, so teachers translate curriculum content into learning activities that are relevant to learners and based on the principles of effective teaching and learning. They, they apply their professional knowledge to plan and design individually or in collaboration with colleagues, well-structured and sequenced lessons that are contextually relevant, responsive to learners' needs, and incorporate a range of teaching and learning resources. So again, the learners' need, also paulit-ulit yan, no? learners' need um, uh, focus natin. Then, align it, align that with what is the... Uh, requirements of uh, the industry. So, medyo ititweak or imomodify mo yung lesson mo para mas, mas wak kay learner. It's uh, achievable for their um, level. And, at the same time, pag nakatapos na silang mag-aral or when they move to college, uh, ready sila. Hindi sila um, parang beginner pa ulit pagdating ng, ng college. So, because they have the, the basic skills, mas, mas prepared na sila, even, even in working. Kaya, again, uh, sa, sa TLE, and actually in all of the subjects, we're not just teaching um, this specific competency alone. Definitely, Marami tayong na, na uh, i-inject na competency sa, sa different activities natin. Kaya nga sa TLE, meron pa ding research, meron pa ding uh, ganitong paperwork. It's not just about 
you know, practical activities or hands-on activities because um, uh, our our subject it's it's also quite demanding and with that mas marami pa silang natututunan. So teachers should also communicate learning goals to support learner participation, understanding and achievement. So with this one, still kailangan alam ng students what are the goals of the subject, how should they achieve this, um, update them about their performance, uh, ask their parents for, for support also, and so on. Next is apply a variety of assessment tools and strategies in monitoring, evaluating, documenting, and reporting learners' needs, progress, and achievement. So with this one naman, teachers should use assessment data in a variety of ways to inform and enhance the teaching and learning process and programs. Kaya sa, uh, sa DepEd, and actually, in almost all all of the schools that we have, mas maganda na may uh, anecdotal record. Kasi sa anecdotal record na to, we can uh, record the behavior of the students, their achievements, and so on. And with the class record, no, the, the, the class record is also a powerful tool for us teachers para makikita natin na Bakit bumabaksak yung student na to? Baka sa certain activity na to, eh, marami talagang student ang bumaksak kasi masyadong mahirap yung exam mo. So, those kinds of, of record helps us in adjusting, modifying, and improving our assessment, the strategies, how we monitor them, how we uh, can help students to progress in their uh, class or in the subject. So, teachers should also provide learners with the necessary feedback. So, as mentioned nga, kailangan alam ng students ang uh, performance nila sa, sa klase. Kasi, ganito lang yan eh, kung hindi natin sila kakausapin, kung hindi natin sila papayuhan ng uh, dapat nilang gawin, eh, wala talaga silang gagawin. <laughs> so, hindi nila Ang mga students, pansin ko, hindi sila ganun ka-hands-on. Hindi lahat ay ganun ka-hands-on in terms of their performance. Pag sinabi mo lang na, oh, babaksa ka na. Anong, anong plano mo? Anong gusto mong gawin? So, doon lang sila kikilos. Kaya, as much as possible, we talk to them. We update them of how they are performing in our class. Okay, so these learner learning outcomes, their performance should be done uh, as much as possible every quarter. So first quarter, uh, may, merong mga parent-teacher conference. So second quarter, okay, another batch and so on and so forth. Is to establish school community partnerships aimed to enriching the learning environment as well as the community's engagement in the edu educative process. So for this one, hindi lang ang teachers ang kikilos, hindi lang ang school ang gagawa ng paraan para uh, maging okay yung performance, behavior ng mga students, but as well as the parents, the community, the barangay, the city hall, the mayors, and so on. So, these are what we call stakeholders. So, teachers should identify and respond to opportunities that link teaching and learning in the classroom to the experiences, interests, and aspirations of the wider school community and other stakeholders. So, paano nga ba mangyayari yun? Siyempre, with cooperation with these stakeholders. If we have some projects, some uh, activities that requires the help of the community, we communicate with the barangay, talk to them with our plans. If mas malaki pa sa barangay, even the, um, the municipal hall, the staff there, and so on. So, they should understand and fulfill their obligations in upholding professional ethics, accountability, and transpar 
transparency to promote professional and harmonious relationship relationships with learners, parents, school, and the wider community. So we do this um, partnership with the community, with the stakeholders, because again, there are outside factors. When, when I say outside factors, outside of the school that influences or affects the student's behavior and performance. So, um, we need to know what's in their community. And with that, um, paano natin magagamit yung community to enhance their skills, to make them more competent. Kaya, uh, meron nga, kaya may mga activities tayong uh, on-the-job training, um, community service, or seminars with with this um, stakeholder, with different companies, or an organization, because hindi dapat expose ng students sa kung, kung ano ang nasa loob ng classroom, the book, the teachers, hindi lang yon we try to expose them um, outside of the school, the, the real scenario, the companies, the um, different organizations related to uh, the subject or that will help them in the future in uh, making them um, professionals or citizens. Next is teachers should value personal growth and professional development and exhibit high personal regard for the profession by maintaining qualities that uphold dig the dignity of the te of teaching, such as caring, attitude, respect, and integrity. So remember the code of ethics. Uh, I'm not sure if you have already uh, discussed that with your teachers, uh, but I'll I'll include that in uh, our discussion so teachers should know the code of ethics yan ang uh, uh, parang bible na rin natin on how we should behave we should uh, treat our students it, it compasses a lot of things and besides that professionally because code of ethics uh, may touch of personal growth din yun eh so, even professional development, we should uh, exercise this. If there are training, seminars, kaya uh, sa public school, um, they, they prefer uh, to attend these trainings or seminars well because of promotion also. <laughs> promotion in terms of position, but uh, syempre, promotion na din ng skills mo. Okay, ng, ng learning mo or um, something that you can uh, develop and apply in your uh, class. Kaya dapat professional and personal growth and development, it's a continuous process. Yung mga trainings, masters, uh, seminars, it will help us to become an efficient and effective teacher. So, from those um, qualities that were mentioned in the previous slides, from there, nagkaroon tayo ng mga domains. And these domains, uh, pag tinignan niyo yung, yung rubrics also, para siyang uh, criteria. Okay, well, let's, let's just call it also criteria. So, these are criteria to distinguish the teacher's competency or the required competency. So, sa NCBTS, ito kasi yung dating pangalan, NCBTS, then, it became the NCBTS or the PPST framework. NCBTS stands for National Competency Based Teaching, I think it's Teaching or Teacher Standard. Okay, so first, uh, domain is the content knowledge and pedagogy. Okay, next is the learning environment, diversity of learners, curriculum and planning, 
assessing and reporting community linkages and professional engagement and personal growth and development. So these domains and also the NCBT, the whole framework actually, not just NCBTS, since PPST is um, a more develop or improve NCBTS. So na na gawato na implemento because of first K-12 basic education reform. So with the new educational system, we need also a teacher that can um, teach effectively and efficiently the new curriculum. And that new curriculum, the K-12 basic education, is from uh, the world standards. Kaya nga merong, uh, if you have discussed this in your other subject, the ASEAN integration, where uh, Southeast Asian countries can can work hand in hand. They can we can go to to their countries work there because uh, aligned na yung educational system natin. So we are qualified to work in in these countries. So that's the ASEAN integration. Next is uh, as mentioned with the new uh, educational system. So teacher strengths and needs assessment. So still, even though we can say na ah, pasok naman sila, but you know through time we should still assess if there are still uh, things that they need to improve. Then the scores that relates to teacher quality. So etong mga to, uh, it has been studied carefully, hard to know that. A holistic te to become a holistic and effective teacher, you should have this and other related documents. So there are also uh, other factors. That's why uh, PPST framework was implemented and imposed. Siempre uh, sa status ng Pilipinas ngayon, actually even before COVID, uh, ang baba ng literacy rate. Maraming students na nahirapan sa, sa math and even English. So, with that, uh, nakita na there's really a need for, for change. And lahat ng aspect, di lang si teacher ang kailangang, um, kailangang pagtuunan ng pansin. So, let's talk about content, knowledge, and pedagogy, the domain one. Na banggit ko na naman kung ano yung content, knowledge, and pedagogy. So again, this is uh, a teacher's knowledge about the, the subject matter and how he, she can uh, transform this knowledge into um, something a, a student can learn. And that is through activities, lesson planning, um, teaching strategies or methodologies. So, that's content knowledge and pedagogy. So, ano nga ba ang mga um, ina-analyze or ina-assess under this domain for the, the teachers? So, content knowledge and its application within and across curriculum areas. So, is the teacher inter can interrelate the different um, uh, ideas, the lessons or topics with one another. Na pagkoconnect connect niya ba? Next is so research based knowledge and principles of teaching and learning. Again, we are not uh, conforming in uh, just what's on the books. We still do researches. We still do um, anecdo anecdotal uh, records of the, our students' behavior with the uh, grades of the students. We'll understand more what can we do to, um, to modify the lesson, the activities, so that they can pass the subject and have the 
the competency, this, the knowledge that they need. Then, positive use of ICT. So, if you have remembered the TPAC. So, sa content knowledge and pedagogy, pati yung technology is also included here because we want the teachers to also know how to use ICT to support teaching and learning process. Then, strategies for promoting literacy and numeracy. So, ano ba yung mga ginagawa ni teachers so that the students can, uh, can do this? And then, strategize or strategies for developing critical and creative thinking as well as higher order thinking skills. So, ang focus or ang target na ng mga activities nowadays ay uh, higher order thinking skills. Dapat ganito ang mga activities natin. So, what do, we, what do we mean by that one? Ang higher order thinking skills ay hindi lang yung puro what is this, what is that. It's more of application of what they have learned, producing a certain material or, or product. So, that's higher order thinking skills talagang. Pag iisipin mo yung mga bata and you let them create something out of it. And, uh, mother tongue. Filipino and English in teaching and learning. So, these languages should also be used in our uh, class. Then, classroom communication strategies. So, this one is how we um, communicate with students, not just verbally, but even our gestures, even our um, the the way we respond to their answers, the way we behave also, kasi it's also a communication strategy. And if uh, our students observe na parang offending yung kilos natin or the way we speak or the way we, we, uh, we respond. So, it's, uh, it's definitely not a good thing in our class. Next is domain 2, learning environment. So, learning environment is about learner safety and security. So, does the learner feel safe inside the classroom? Not just, you know, in, in terms of danger and natural calamities. Kasi yung mga ganun, hindi rin naman natin maiiwasan, no? And uh, the management is also... Um, responsible for that. But in terms of safety and security, do they feel belong? Do they feel like no one's uh, harassing them? No one's bullying them? Yan yung mga usual na problem sa, uh, sa classroom. So, we should ensure that no discrimination, harassment, bullying, and so on. Fair learning environment, uh, I think, Hindi ko na kailangang uh, i-discuss further yan. And uh, baka na-experience nyo rin to in terms of fair treatment from your teachers. Then, management of classroom activities or classroom structure and activities. So, how does the teacher uh, fix or uh, rearrange the classroom para mas maging um, comfortable yung uh, students whenever they are doing activities. Actually, nowadays, merong na uusong um, strategy. So, what teachers are doing are uh, they rearrange the, the chairs. They change the chairs into sofas, uh, bean bags. Kasi, mas komportable yung studyante kapag nagbabasa sila or nag-aaral sila in a in a comfortable uh, position. Yung iba may, may um, rag or may uh, carpet. I mean, carpet. They can, they can uh, lie down. They can uh, do this um, sitting. Pwede sila mag engine seat while, while reading something or doing an activity. And with that, mas uh, effective daw. Okay, so based on a lot of researches. So probably we can also do that. 
support for learner participation. So for this, we should always encourage our students to participate, to um, work with, with their group mates, work with their activities, and share their, their ideas, and so on. Then promotion of purposive learning. When we say purposive learning from the term itself, pur purpose. Okay, purposive. So we should guide our students to know the importance, their purpose in the class, how this subject will will help them in the future or in their life. So that is purposive learning because students will not do something, and I think I experience it all, we will not do something as students if we don't see the importance or how it will benefit us. Pag itong subject na to or even the activity, eh, parang wala namang kwenta to sa akin. Wala naman talaga akong mahukuha out of this. But if we explain to them that that's why we're doing this, because I want you to learn, um, how to put up your own business. So, gagawin nila. And management of learner behavior. So, even in the learning environment, kasama to. Because you want to have an environment na walang, alam mo yun, nagtatantrums, walang nagbubugbugan, <laughs> or nagsisigawan ng mga bata. So, as teachers, we should know how to control them. Next, we have the diversity of learners. So, for this one, the goal or the specific criteria we'll, we are looking for are learners, gender, needs, strengths, interests, and experiences. So, as teachers, kailangan alam natin kung paano i-treat to. Okay, alam natin itong mga uh, uh, information na to from our students because, again, um, from there, we will know how to help them through our classes, activities, uh, pag PTC, or why they are behaving like this, why is their performance like this. So, with these, mas madali nating mare-resolve ang uh, uh, needs ng mga students. Next, Learners, linguistic, cultural, socio-economic, and religious backgrounds. Siyempre, kung ang mga students natin ay galing sa uh, ganitong religious background or um, uh, belief, bakit ka magpapa-activity na something that is against their religious background or magpapa-activity ka na... Um, they, they need to buy a lot of items eh, in terms of their socioeconomic status. Uh, medyo hindi feasible na magkaroon ng ganong activity. So, again, we should respect and um, consider this before having different activities. And also, learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents mas magandang uh, we take note of that. Kung meron tayong uh, nasa klase that has disabilities or gifted, so maybe we could have an extra work for them, a different activity for them. Learners in difficult circumstances, usong-uso yan ngayon, mga may uh, mental health problems, depression, those students that needs to, to work. I, uh, I understand that uh, our situation now, it's, it's quite difficult. Um, but I'll, I'll try to be considerate and uh, I try to, to help them in whatever way I can. So as teachers, sana uh, maging ganun din tayo or much more. Then learners from indigenous groups. Next is curriculum and planning. So, this is about planning and management of teaching and learning process. So, as mentioned, how we uh, manage the topics if 
sa curriculum ba natin, lahat ng subjects na yon, lahat ng requirements ng learning goals, uh, are we incorporating it in our class na a-achieve ba ng mga students? Next is learning outcomes aligned with learning competencies. So, learning outcomes of our topics, the activity itself, is it aligned with what is in the syllabus, in the curriculum, and also the requirement of the course? So, relevance of uh, responsiveness of learning programs. So, uh, does this curriculum, does are these uh, the activities that we have planned, we have created, is it responsive to the learning needs, to the subject matter? And professional collaboration to enrich teaching practice. So it's not just uh, us who will be um, uh, where the students will, will have an interaction with. Maybe we can ask uh, other people, other professional na nagtatrabaho sa ganitong industry. Sabihin natin kung, kung ABM students ang tinuturuan mo, you can uh, ask an accountant to have a talk with your students. Uh, OJTs, right? Sa OJT, we let them expose in different companies and practice what they have uh, learned from our class. And teaching and learning resources, including ICT. So, for this one, uh, again, na-touch na naman si ICT because we cannot uh, stop this, the integration of ICT in education. That's why we should always uh, know how to use ICT in improving our teaching, teaching and the learning process itself. And from there, we can also get... Yan, learning resources. Next is assessment and reporting. So, it's about design, selection, organization, and utilization of assessment strategies. So, we have different ass uh, assessment strategies. The formative, summative, then meron pa yung iba't ibang uh, klase in, in those two. So, we should know what type of assessment should we use for this lesson and for uh, this competency. So, kung ang aim mo ay uh, ang student matutunan how to bake a cake, syempre hindi ka magpapa-written exam. You'll have a, a demonstrated assessment. And if math, no? Siyempre, hindi naman pwedeng i-demonstrate ng student. So, it would be better if it's a written exam. Including here also is the monitoring and evaluation of learner progress and achievement. So, kailangan, as mentioned, we monitor, we record the achievement of our students. We compare the uh, first quarter and also the second quarter. Meron din tayong ginagawa sa exams na uh, table of specification or the TOS na tinitingnan natin yung level of difficulty per item. Okay? And uh, after the exam, we also check oh, sino mga nakakuha ng tamang score sa, sa, subject, uh, sa item na to, sino mga nagkamali, and so on. So, with that, nakikita natin na um, medyo mahirap pala itong, itong question ko. Kailangan next time baguhin ko. Okay? So, from there, from the learner's progress, doon tayo kumukuha ng uh, strategies then to uh, make these activities feasible to be achieved by the students. Feedback to improve learning. Always, always talk to your students about their uh, learning performance. As mentioned uh, previously, if we don't talk to our students, mga wala yung pake. <laughs> After they have submitted their exam, their activity, wala na. Because they think, eh, sig siguro maawa naman sa akin si mami or uh, babawi na lang ako next quarter. So, we need to talk to them, to guide them 
to set goals for them. Kasi pati pagsaset ng goals ay hindi nila ginagawa. So, we need to set goals for them na, oh, next quarter, kailangan ganito na ang mapasa mo. Kailangan ganito na ang, ang grades mo. Then, communication of learner needs, progress, and achievement to key stakeholders. We should communicate their their performance also to their parents, kung uh, sa, sa admin, um, advisor nila, uh, if they have uh, scholar scholarships, so also communicate with them, and other institutions. Kaya nga sa class record natin, no, merong mga comments dyan, so that other people, especially the stakeholders, can, uh, will know about their uh, performance. And lastly, is the use of assessment data to enhance teaching and learning practices and programs. So, as mentioned, from those uh, records that we have, we can use it to um, enhance the way we teach, the way we prepare activities, the way we prepare instructional materials. Next, we have community linkages and professional engagement. So, for this one, it's about establishment of learning environments that are responsive to community context. So, we we um, establish, we set up our learning environment, the classroom, the school, in a way that they can be um, citizens that will contribute in their community. So, kung ano yung needs ng community nila, yun yung uh, gusto din nating ma-develop. Ma Kaya ako, pag nagpapa-activity din, um, hindi ako nagpapa-activity na puro research lang. Search online, read this, what are your thoughts, hindi ganun. Uh, interview someone in your community or interview your barangay captain, interview this person in your community because again, we we want our students to be uh, ito pa no ito yung gusto nating ma uh, mahulma sa students natin we want them to be citizens professionals na may pake sa community nila so sa TLE hindi lang tayo nagtuturo kung paano sila uh, magluto pwedeng we are are teaching them so that they'll know nutrition, they can prepare healthy dishes for their community, uh, malabanan, yung malnutrition, and so on. So, that's also our aim. Then, engagement of parents in the wider school community and in the educative process. So, again, parents, stakeholders, the, the barangay, the city hall, the uh, health workers, even the health workers, they should be um, connected or in partnership with us. Professional ethics, so I think you know that, like the code of ethics, uh, nandun na lahat yun. School policies and procedures, so dapat sumusunod pa din tayo sa mga policies nito. And personal growth and professional development, so medyo teacher side na lang to. And somehow dun sa domain 6, mostly ay uh, teacher side din. No? Um, philosophy of, of teaching, mukhang uh, dapat ito ay eh, basic na lang sa atin. Sabi nga nila, it runs in our blood. Uh, ito na ang this is our soul. It's it's natural to us. Dignity of teaching as a profession. Professional links with colleagues, not relationship ones, but uh, professional links. Links that will um, enhance you. Pwedeng mga organizations or some clubs where you you grow professionally and, and those those things. Professional reflection and learning to improve practice and professional development goals. So, ito medyo personal na talaga kay, kay teacher. Uh, wala nang masyadong 
um, impact si student dito. So, as a teacher, what are your plans? What are your goals? How do you improve yourself? And so on. That's why it's personal growth and professional development. So, as mentioned in the uh, previous slides, meron tayong seven domains which comprises of uh, yan, content knowledge and pedagogy, learning environment, diversity of learners, curriculum and planning, assessment and reporting, community linkages and professional engagement, and personal growth and professional development. So since these domains are like uh, the, the criteria, okay, the criteria of what a teacher should have, so um, we we grade or we score also teachers according to what we call career stages. So teacher professional development happens in a continuum from beginning to exemplary practice. Anchored on the principle of lifelong learning. Remember lifelong learning, no? Learning is uh, a continuous process. So the set of professional standards for teachers recognizes the significance of a standards framework that articulates developmental progression as teachers develop, refine their practice, and respond to complexities of educational reforms. So the following statements, which define the work of teachers at different career stages, make explicit the elements of high-quality teaching for the 21st century. They comprise descriptors that have been informed by teachers' understandings of what is required at each of the four career stages. So the descriptors represent a continuum of development within the profession by providing a basis for attracting preparing, developing, and supporting teachers. So first, let's have the career stage one. And uh, this one, pag ito yung nakuha ang score ni teacher from the assessment, we consider that teacher as a beginner or beginning teachers. So they have gained the qualifications recognized for entry into the teaching profession, okay, so they have a strong understanding of the subject areas in which they are trained in terms of content, knowledge, and pedagogy. They possess the requisite knowledge, skills, and values that support the teaching and learning process. They manage learning programs and have strategies that promote learning based on the learning needs of their students. They seek advice from experienced colleagues to consolidate their teaching practice. In short, uh, they know the, the basic requirements. Okay? So they are, um, they are very much aware of the code of conduct, the, the code of ethics for teachers, the uh, different philosophies and strategies in education. However, they still need guidance from their colleagues, seniors, or supervisors so that they can improve more. They can be become a much better teacher. Next, career stage two are the proficient teachers. They are professionally independent in the application of, application of skills vital to the teaching and learning process. I'll zoom ko lang. Okay, so they provide focused teaching programs that meet curriculum and assessment requirements. They display skills in planning, implementing, and uh, managing learning programs. So they actively engage in collaborative learning with the professional community and other stakeholders for, for mutual growth and advancement. They are reflective practitioners who continually consolidate the knowledge, skills, and practices of career stage one teachers. So, siguro sa a pagkapasok niyo ng public or in your first teaching career, so definitely you'll be a beginning teacher. But after, uh, let's say, two to three years, with the experience that you've had during those two to three years, the mentoring 
that your supervisors or senior teachers have given to you, you can consider yourself as a proficient teacher or career stage two. Then for career stage three, teachers or the high proficient teachers consistently display. So consistent na yung pag-display ng high level of performance in their teaching practice. They manifest an in-depth and sophisticated understanding of the teaching and learning process. They have high education-focused situation cognition, are more adept in problem-solving and optimize opportunities gained from experience. So career stage C teachers work collaboratively with colleagues and provide them support and mentoring to enhance their learning and practice. They continually continually seek to develop their professional knowledge and practice by reflecting on their own needs and those of their colleagues and students. So, ito, uh, batikan na rin, no? <laughs> mga, mga five years or more uh, of experience. So, that's highly proficient teachers. And definitely, pag nasa ganitong stage ka na, again, your performance, the high level performance should be consistent. And you're also uh, mentoring other, your, your um, beginning, the beginning teachers. However, for career stage four, ito na yung highest. So distinguished teachers embody the highest standard for teaching, uh, grounded in global best practices, they exhibit exceptional capacity to improve their own teaching practice and that of others. So, ito mga supervisors na to or mga master teachers. They are recognized as leaders in education, contribute, contributors to the profession, and initiators of collaborations and partnership. They create lifelong impact in the lives of colleagues, students, and others. So, hindi lang students ang uh, in influence nila, but even their colleagues. So, they consistently seek professional advancement and relevance in pursuit of teaching quality and excellence. They exhibit commitment to inspire the education community and stakeholders for the improvement of education provision in the Philippines. Actually, not just master teachers, eh, but principals, dean, um, mga nas, nag work mismo sa uh, uh, or kinukuha ng, ng DepEd for for advice, no? So, they are part of career stage 4. Further, ito ang uh, sinasabi kong rubrics. 
Okay, so kung mapapansin nyo dito, for instance, so for domain 1, if we're gonna um, grade or evaluate a teacher, so this is the domain 1, the criteria 1, and ito yung scoring natin. In beginning, proficient, highly proficient, and distinguished teachers. And if you can remember, di ba, sa, sa uh, per uh, domain, there are specific criteria. So, ayan yun. So, there's specific strands. So, strand one. So, rubrics talaga to for evaluating teachers. And I suggest you scan this and probably you can grade yourself if uh, na-achieve nyo ba to para alam nyo kung ano yung kailangan yung i-improve. So, that's for domain one. Ayan, for domain two. And so on. I'll attach this file in, in my post in, in this video lecture so that you can have a copy, a personal copy. And it's very useful for you, especially if you plan to, to teach in a public institution like the high schools or even state universities. So thank you so much for watching, listening to our video lecture. Um, I'll be posting other video lectures pero uh, extra na lang or added information. And uh, I suggest that you work on your recorded teaching demonstration until the 20th of February. Huwag na nating patagalin no? para uh, matapos ko na yung mga activities natin and so on. So I hope that you... You work on very well with your teaching demonstration. Tingnan natin kung sino talaga ang uh, ready na to become uh, a public teacher or uh, a professor in the future. Let's see. So, thank you again and have a great day.